Hey everyone, my name is Travis. I'm the founder of Make Inspires Makerspaces, and today we're going to make a print in place car using Tinkercad. Print in place means that it can print as one object and have moving elements. Today, I want you all to follow along precisely if you haven't done this before, because the numbers are going to be really precise. So we're going to start by creating the body of our car on its side. I would like everyone to make a car that is 40 by 80, so 40 deep by 80 wide and 40 tall. Like I said, this is our car on its side. Um, I'd imagine maybe the, the right side being the, fr the front of it. And I'm gonna start to chop away at it to make it look more like a car. I think actually today I'm gonna make a pickup truck. I'm gonna take this box hole and the precise size of it doesn't really matter. Uh, what I want to make sure is that it chops away the whole, um, you know, the height. So I made it 60 tall. And I'm going to spin it a bit, get it at an angle. And this is going to be our, you know what, I'm going to do a, a, a few shapes together to make this hood, uh, to, or to make the truck. So here's our, like that's gonna be the windshield. I'm gonna take another box out. Again, make sure that it's tall enough to cut the whole thing, which is 40 and big enough to dive it in as much as I would like. And now I'm gonna go ahead and make the back. We can bring out another box. Instead, I'm gonna duplicate this one and I'm gonna bring it to the back and extend it. And if I imagine all these grouping together, it more or less looks like a truck. So we're going to roll with it. I use Command A, or Control A, to select all, and then I grouped it. And now here is my truck, my pickup truck. We're going to get to the fun part rather quickly with this one, which is creating the print-in-place wheels. We're going to take a cylinder and make a pretty simple wheel. Uh, this size actually, 20 by 20, looks pretty appropriate, right? The thing is that when uh, you have a cylinder, the default, it's not super accurate. If you bring up the sides all the way to 64, the cylinder is gonna be more smooth. I'm gonna hit the home view to go back, and I wanna make this, you know, the size of a tire. And whenever we could use duplication, uh, we should. So I'm not going to make the back ones. We're going to just use the front wheel and axle, wheels and axle, and duplicate it for the back. We're going to put a cylinder next to it. We're going to make it smaller. We need to make sure that it's big enough to not break um, as a physical component when we use it. So you're going to want it to be at least uh, two or three by three. Again. Today, when we're all doing this together, we might as well just use the same exact number. So I'm doing four by four millimeters and 40 tall. I'm gonna select using shift the wheel. I'm gonna click on a line and then I'm gonna meet them in the middle. So I'm gonna take this cone and I'm gonna lay it on, on top of the wheel. And then I'm gonna hold down shift and click on the wheel, click on a line, I'm gonna click back on the wheel. That way I tell Tinkercad I want these two shapes to be aligned relative to the specific shape, meaning the wheel. So once again, after I clicked the line, I clicked on the wheel, which tells Tinkercad I want the purple thing to align to the orange thing. So middle, middle. Um, I thought it was the same size. Is that the same size, everyone? 20 by 20? 20 by 20? All right, cool. My eye was just playing tricks on me. But yeah, that's the same size. Great. It's a little, it's a little tall. I don't think we needed that tall. So I'm going to take the 20 and I'm going to bring it down to 15. Technically speaking, you don't want it to be too steep because 3D printers, there's basically a 45 degree overhang rule. If the overhang is more than 45 degrees, you're going to need supports. So having this at, a, at, at 15, the height, of the cone at 15 is gonna mean when we flip this, that the cone has about a 45 degree 
inclined so the printer will be able to print it without supports. I'm gonna group the cone and the wheel. It's one of the reasons why we didn't group earlier. And then I'm gonna duplicate that. I am then going to mirror it or flip it. And then I'm going to align it with the top of this cylinder. There's a couple ways to do that. I used a line. You could just manually drag it up because you know the height. It's 40. All right, great. You'll notice the wheels are perfectly flush with the vehicle. That's on, on purpose because this is going to print on its side. Uh, we don't really have much of an axle, do we? So you know what we're going to do? It's okay. We could, have, we could have YouTube videos where we, where we admit mistakes. I'm going to bring this down. I want to see some of the cylinder. It's going to help um, with the function of, of the design. Now, this one's upside down. Oops. Did anyone notice that I also made the wheel a different size? It's a good moment, learning moment for everyone. <laughs> so I'm going to hit undo. Love undo. I'm going to ungroup that one. I'm going to ungroup that one. I'm going to ungroup both, both those wheels. I'm going to take the cones and... I should have had a number more like 10 or 12. So we're gonna do 10. Now the thing is this cone is upside down. It wants us to see the um the height modifier up top, but if we look at it from beneath, it'll allow us to modify the height from underneath. All right, great. Ooh, that looks nice. All right, so we have our wheel. We have the cone that allows the wheel to print vertically. We have the axle. I'm selecting all of these, and I'm going to hit group. Great. Home view. Zoom in a bit, and I'm going to push this in so I don't see that axle anymore. So having it just one in, like tapping once on the keyboard, one millimeter, probably not enough. It's not enough, because we need to create the empty space in there, too. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So I'm going to push it in. Two more, I'm also gonna move it to the left. I'm gonna duplicate the wheels and I'm gonna create a hole. And then I'm gonna lift this while holding down shift, the, modifi the modifier. So holding down shift, lifting it, I'm gonna go to, I, the sides are, are big enough for it to have some room between the wheel, the axle, and the body of the car. So in this case, I think 56 will work. I'm going to let go of the mouse, let go of shift. Shift, the modifier, is no longer being selected. And we're going to take the same shape and push it down to 40. Awesome. You could probably tell what's going to happen. But before we do that, I'm going to select the wheel and the wheel hole or the wheel well. I'm going to duplicate it. There's another one in the same spot. I'm going to go to the left with my arrows. Don't use your mouse. Just use the arrows. And then I'm going to select on nothing so I could select these holes. Select the car. Group it. And boom. We have our lovely print in place car. Now you could see the wheel wells are working out. You could imagine the axle is probably going to work. But we could double check. Oops, undo. There's two ways. You could do the old school way, of taking a box and cutting it and looking inside. Whoa, cool, huh? Look at that. Or you could do the new school way, non destructive. I'm going to take the box, I'm going to go to solid, sorry, the original box, which is now the body of the car, and go to transparent. And we can see if we zoom in, it's more pronounced up here. But you'll see if you look at the axle area, there is space between. A good rule of thumb is you're going to need at least 0.2 millimeters for this to work between the two. And I'm pretty sure we got it. So if this prints vertically, you could see that you're basically printing three separate objects. It's just that the car, body of the car, is wrapped around the wheels on the axle. So it creates one thing. Congratulations, you've created a print, print in place car. I'm technically ready to go and print this. For any decoration, you do have to keep in mind 
if you make anything, you know, pop out of the top or the side, which right now is the top, like um, a rear view mirror, for instance, you're not really going to be able to do that to the other side unless you print it separately and glue it. Um, similarly, if I want to make a, a window here, and I'm going to do this really quickly for the sake of education. It's not the most beautiful window. If I, whether I have it one millimeter down or a few millimeters, maybe like an open window, that on the other side will only work if your printer is decent at bridging, which means, you know, spanning a space. And if you make a complicated window, it may not, you know, that changes things. Alternatively, you know, we're in a design phase here, so I could, this video can extend from about 10 minutes to hours, but we could just take this, right? And we could dive it in the whole thing. If, if we just create a hole through the whole thing, it, it's certainly gonna be able to print that. Thank you all for joining. I hope you enjoy your print in place car. I'd love to see some that you all make. Comment, show me the Tinkercad designs by sending links and sharing them with me. I'd love to see what you all come up with. Thanks.